You said this, in general, this is also one of the reasons men find youth attractive. You want to block the internet? I'll block the internet right effing now. The reason 18 and 19 year olds are more attractive than 25 year olds is because they've been through less. That is misogyny. Why? Because you are encouraging a mindset about 25 year old women that makes them sound out to be infinitely less desirable than 18, 19 year olds and having effectively been having too much sex to be taken in a more respectful way. I don't want to give Piers Morgan too much credit here because one thing that he absolutely does constantly is he finds people who are worse than him. You know, he, he tries as hard as he can to comb the landscapes. He gets a big old greasy comb and he, he strips it. He's like, ooh, someone who makes me look like I'm great. And then he interviews them. So that's all this really was. Um, but, and, and, and there were issues with, you know, he could have let Andrew talk a little bit more just so people could see that Andrew really ain't talking about nothing. What do you mean by what you said? That's not misogyny because it's not anti-women. I'm, I'm saying that an 18 or a 19 year old woman would be more desirable. It's pretty anti-25 year old women. Anti-25 year old women we can argue, but not misogyny. Well, that's misogyny let's, then, isn't let's, it? No, 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 it's not. Well, being anti any woman at all is misogyny. Not when, I'm, not when I'm saying that women are beautiful and attractive at a certain age and saying that age You're is saying 18, 19 year olds are more attractive than 25 Well, then ageist perhaps, but misogynistic absolutely is that not. Is that but you just accepted it was misogyny. No, I didn't. You said it was misogyny. I'm telling you, no, it's not. But the bigger thing that I wanted to get at, you know, I don't even want to waste that much time talking about Andrew Tate or you know, any of the people, you know, like Fresh and Fit specifically in this video. The truth is, is that there will be another Andrew Tate and another Andrew Tate and another Andrew Tate, because the bigger problem is that within society, uh, there is a huge issue with misogyny. And I don't mean that in a cliche, cheap way. I just mean that in a sense that men and women, um, especially at a younger uh, age bracket, aren't necessarily in tune with one another. And there's a lot of leadership that's needed. And that's why people such as Andrew Tate can uh, you know, grow with so much popularity because you have a lot of young men who are looking for leadership, who are looking for examples, and who are looking for guidance, not just to do better with women, but also just maybe to find themselves. So that's the bigger issue, and that's why there will be many and more Andrew Tate. Parts of the world that believe that about 26-year-old women are parts of the world where women are not allowed out on their own. That's your that's a conversation. They have to have. wear full burkas. Well, that's a conversation. They're not to allowed have. to drive cars. That's nothing to do with me. But is that the kind of world for a woman that you? I was mediating. A, I was mediating a conversation. No, I'm asking you what you think. I I don't live in a country where that happens. You're using that as the excuse for why you're not sorry for saying it. It's not an excuse. Is that there are parts of the world where this is fine? My friend. So my question to you is, well, do you think it's fine? I don't think it's fine. I live in a world where... You don't think it's fine? My, the reason this I... This isn't that hard, Andrew. You can simply say, Piers, you know what? With the benefit of hindsight, I wish I hadn't said it like that. And if a 26-year-old woman's watching, I'm sorry I said that, because that actually is blatantly misogynist. And even though that's a view held by other parts of the world, it's not a view I share. Now, I've talked about, uh, you know, the, the Manosphere Red Pill community a variety of times, but it's, it's really fascinating how extensive the community really is. I mean, they have all these different types of hierarchy labels. They have all these ideas. And for the most part, it's, you know, just a bunch of extremism that overall really isn't very useful, you know. Again, here and there, there may be a few things at a shallow level that could be decent, but you can find much more positive guidance many other places. You know, uh, for the most part, people are just kind of hopping into this space and being as ridiculous as possible because that gets them views. Uh, but again, it, it's a short lived type of a thing because a lot of these guys are making a lot of money off of courses, you know, for the, for the most part from, again, young men who are looking for guidance. So, you know, there's a lot to be said about just um, uh, man and woman relationships in this country in terms of how we just see one another, how we relate to one another. Um, and it needs to be addressed in a healthier way, possibly in a public way, um, not in some type of indoctrinated way, but just something that needs to be put uh, more effort into addressing the issue such that these communities are as large as they are. What has come clear to me in the interview is that a lot of things you say you wouldn't say now that you've said before. But I'd say them differently, perhaps. You, you, yeah, right. So to me, that's an acceptance, not just that you want to get back on platforms, because maybe that was one of the reasons you, you were no platform, but that you've recognised and understood the potential harm to the wrong kind of impressionable mind by some of the things you've said. Would that be fair? I think that's 80% fair. I recognize and understand that with massive fame, 
you have to be more careful about being misconstrued. Like I said earlier, 1% of people misunderstanding you doesn't matter with a small audience. It matters with a very large audience. With power comes responsibility. Mm. I still believe the things I say. I do not want to be a negative force for the world. I also understand that I am a man who's lived a very difficult, nuanced life, and I am capable of making nuanced points that may be misunderstood by teenagers. For the most part, like a lot of people, they'll find themselves maybe deep within it if they had either gone through a difficult relationship type situation and maybe they're, again, just young and looking for guidance or, or whatever. But oftentimes, you know, a lot of these guys, since they're younger, a lot of them will grow out of it. You know what I mean? Like they'll start to, you know, be exposed to other types of examples, which is why it's important uh, for organizations like TYT to exist because it's because of us, all of us sustaining this platform together uh, that we're able to um, not just spread uh, better uh, influence on this platform, but you know, I, I have, a, like my career in a lot of ways, in many ways has been uh, set and made because of TYT and that has allowed me to then step forth into the world and provide a better influence. You see what I'm saying? So again, um, at the end of the day, uh, what we really need to do is address the bigger issue at hand. Um, because again, there's going to be many more Andrew Tates uh, that, that come after him who fill in the gaps. Uh, there's already a guy named Sneeko who's doing that. So we'll see many more, but uh, I think that um, the bigger issues are something that I personally absolutely um, will address as part of my influence as I continue to grow.